everybody. I have some leaflets if you could please pass them around. Thank you so much for coming here this Saturday morning. <coughs> and uh, thank you, AMCA, for this panel. I also like to acknowledge Dr. Leila Diba, curator of Iran Mother at Asia Society. Uh, my presentation is based on a lengthy research paper that focused on the emergence of early signs of visual art criticism in Tehran of uh, pre-revolution. I discussed notable documented trends and artistic themes of the time, and especially I start from the write-ups and the roles <coughs> writer critics played in artistic developments as judgment for the public and in promotion of certain trends and artistic uh, developments in the 70s. I will also examine um, the issues of innovation, authenticity, originality, plagiarism as it was treated in print. Let me start with write-ups. Edmund Feldman in his uh, sequential method says, the central task of criticism is based on description, analysis, interpretation, and judgment. He suggests that journalistic criticism deals with art mainly to the extent that it is newsworthy. In pre-revolution Iran, reviews were normally associated with newspapers and magazines, while criticism was traditionally published in books and journals. Although both required some degrees of analysis and value judgment, these were an element of time, there was element of time in news in regards to reviews, but criticisms could be written later. The early review formats usually had deadlines, word count restrictions, and positive and negative opinions, whereas the critiques were more balanced, impersonal, and were often written by prominent writers. Uh, Terry Barrett, author of Criticizing Art, Understanding the Contemporary, bases his approach to what I just explained, the interpreting, judging, theorizing, and describing, but he then suggests these four overlap, and interpretation is the most important activity of criticism. In Iran of the late 50s, 60s, and pre-revolution, we, we see a lot of what the describing part is about, what they used to ridicule as ensha, composition. Texts were often oriented toward personal value judgments, personal attacks, and were single layer emotional exaggerations. The more professional writings written in the late 60s and 70s delved into structure, content, relevance of an artwork <coughs> with more impersonal uh, interpretations. However, the differences most of the time didn't have to do with what is a write-up or a critic. It had to do with who wrote the article. Most early art reviews had to do, um, they secured the importance of modern trends or were written to disc discredit the new arts. The early writer educator brought the issue of Iranian and Islamic traditions versus modernity to public debate. And we have a um, best example of uh, Karim Emami, uh, Yar Shater, and uh, Marco Gregorian, who uh, wrote the catalogs for the first biennales um, around uh, late, um, late 1958 and 57, 8, and 60s, early 60s. And um, these, uh, there were two issues that they focused, individuality and originality. The so-called political approaches came late. Uh, which came during the 70s, these avoid, avoided evaluation of the artwork as an independent entity, yet they showed some elements of theorizing. Inspired by Frankfurt School, some artists and scholars such as Hannibal al khas and Sima Kuban, the late Sima Kuban at Tehran University, along with a group of political-minded artists and writers of the time, <coughs> looked at art production as a cultural tool and a means to educate the, the audience. This trend of thought <coughs> reacted against classical theories of beauty on the ground that art should have a dominant enlightening message aligned with the needs of mass culture. Meanwhile, most other narratives, and there were a lot of them, majority of translations, 
dealt with technical methods, aesthetic evaluation, classical philosophy of art, and still others had mythological approaches. They um, talked about dreams, and the unconscious, and the spiritual realms. However, the writings would not delve into deeply into any theory at all. All these writings played an essential role in creating a fertile ground for more professional art evaluation that came later. Loyalty to local and traditional motifs were among issues of major debate. For example, Rastakhiz Javanan and Rastakhiz newspaper printed several articles in which an exhibition of in, which was in, installed, installed, organized by Azad Group, uh, the independent group, um, consisting of Marco Gregorian, uh, Sirak Melkonian, and uh, Nami, and I think Arab Shahi. Um, he, uh, this uh, Azad group was attacked, saying that, and they were one of the most important groups that were showing at the time. Especially the works of Gregorian and Mumayez was attacked, saying that these are superficial. Marco's use of bread in the work, which you saw in the slides, dried clay, Kagel, in his paintings, were particularly pointed out to be an insult to Iranian tradition, norms, and culture. Along the same lines, uh, Jalal al Ahmad, who was a prominent writer, wrote a very negative review about Hossein Zenderudi and Sadiq Tabrizi from um, the um, um, Sabahanistan. He questioned the use of fragmented writing in their paintings. He was very upset about a particular phrase, Imam Bad Azor, that they had put in, uh, which ridiculed the concept of Imam Asr. And Imam As, you know, could mean Imam of all times or that time, and uh, the 12 Imam. So uh, Al Ahmad objected the use of fragmented words and on the basis that they devalued the concept of Kalame and uh, also uh, um, was uh, saying that these are offending and how can you do a highly, you know, a highly spiritual and uh, significant Islamic culture should not be offended. And um, the account of it is written uh, by Aydena Abbaslu. Concepts such as what we see from a lot of these writings is that the concepts such as humor, satire, the quality of awkwardness, staying away from aesthetic <coughs> values, were internalized and introduced in the works of many avant-garde artists such as Marco and Momagez in Abi exhibition and some other <coughs> exhibitions. These modern concepts were visually depicted, however, not adequately embraced, nor debated by the dense circles of artists. So many of the writings exhibited a clear gap between the visual understanding of what was considered modern versus theorizing and verbalizing the concepts. So if you open your leaflets now, I'm going to give you some examples. The reviews often focused on the issue of Iranian identity and criticized the lack of originality, Kalan Hari said in his book. Exhibitions were received with such harsh terms as artistic plagiarism that complicate genuine exploration. Superficial, the art of sieve and toilet paper. If you could see the, the sieve and the toilet paper, those are the works of Marco. And uh, at, at the time, uh, it was attacked by Mojabi, who is a prominent writer critic. Imitations of the kind of art already considered old in the US. Mina Asadi said that. Anybody could hang knives, and if you see those knives, those are uh, by Momayez. From the ceiling, or buy a chair from a second-hand store and put a rope on it, get a carpenter to tie together. <laughs> Statements such as these show a clear lack of understanding and writing and discussion about ready-made art. Some writers, on the other hand, regularly gave positive reviews and defied imitation of old masters. People like Mansure Pirnia, Lindy Golestan, Besad Hatam, and many more. Still others, due to political and social restrictions, use pen names in their reviews. People like Mime Behazin, uh, Mansure Hosseini, who used uh, Dr. Asad as a pen name, Khosrogole Sorhi, who was uh, later killed, 
He used uh, Khosro, um, Tehrani, Khosro, Khatuzian, and Damun as pen name. So now let me talk about the judgment as, for the public and uh, the role of um, <coughs> uh, patron critics. An important observation about the era's avant-garde art, including the ones produced in Iran, is that many were about physically embodied meaning, in that one can no longer tell whether something was art just by viewing it. Therefore, how the evaluations of these artworks were tackled, or lack of it, is a commentary on the rigid and restrictive role of many writers in the process of judgment for the public. Often in-depth evaluations, enabling public to understand the real complexities of artworks were missing from the discourse. The self-evaluations and the re-examinations of individual artists in facing the process of modernity had already begun, and yet too often it did not or could not have been extensively dealt with in the writings of the time. The dominant discourse stayed away from articulation of, ma of many volatile subjects. In 1975, Mohsen Wazir Muqaddam, who is showing a work um, at Asia Society right now, an artist educator wrote a negative article about the exhibition of Azad Group held at Iran America Society. This article is important, written for Ayandegan, because Waziri pointed out that the catalog of the exhibition did not reflect the premise of the show, although he strongly objected to the concept of experimentation, we nevertheless see more academic analysis incorporated into the, re into the review. Uh, the writer criticized the idea of having themes for a show or commissioning works for exhibitions in advance, which is interesting, opening up an intelligent discussion. As he went on to emphasize the concept of originality, he ended his critique generalizing works and giving personal value judgments, writing, all these works are copies from the works of American artists, which are given local flavor. He then ridiculed the new mentality among many modernists, and he said, why all of a sudden are you all trying to go to Kavir or Kashan to make a cheap copy? Among regular contributors was also Hadiye Seif, who has an interesting, who used to write for Las Bakhiz and Ayan Degan. Uh, this piece specifically that I picked is about uh, the works of Jalil Ziyapur, who, who was an early translator and had uh, founded the uh, Khurus Jangi uh, magazine that had to do with modern art. So he, um, Hadi Seif, first clarified Ziyapur's work as being Cubist in style, and then explained the style. He then went on to ridicule Ziyapur by saying, and, and Ziyapur was working with such, some carpet design. So he was saying, Cubism expressed the pain and fear of human beings faced with machine age who were, com who were con confused by such speed and trend of change. Where is that modernity in our society? He went on to say, it is now the fear of alienating people which makes Ziyapur incorporate Iranian motifs and Islamic geometric designs. In reality, Ziyapur stubbornly opposes these traditions and wants to impose foreign arts on us. Honar Khariji. Looking at these statements, we see how the first, for the first time, many of these writers and artists are facing the concept of modernity in their works, denying it or embracing it as an other. Uh, some artists and writers were highly sensitive to modification and innovations in classical paintings and traditional treatments, and they were reluctant about noticeable innovations. At the same time, the new art was considered was constantly being exhibited and encouraged. Innovations became a hot issue for debate and led to fame for many artists. Therefore, authenticity played a major role in the formation of modern arts judgment and plagiarism debate was often presented in a lot of discussions. And as an example for that, <coughs> Dr. Masoud Fruzan, um, Sorry. wrote many balanced reviews in uh, Majelle Rassakhzi Javanan, 
whose art section was especially <laughs> famous for detecting fakes and gotcha articles about plagiarism. In 1977, newspapers of the time printed two major stories about Marco and the same Vaziri's work as being copies and imitation. Dr. Furuzan, who had done an extensive research work on article uh, of the time, declared in this article that, no, Vaziri's 1962 painting and one of Marco's 1963 uh, artworks were indeed documented in MoMA's collection of Rockefeller. Describing the words, works, he noted that the two Iranian artists indeed created their works earlier than Jasper Jones's and Alberto Burris. By the end of the 70s, we see the importance of critical evaluation within high modernist discourse. By this time, art discussions were expanding, the realities of modern art were being explored, and a professional environment in critic writing was beginning to develop. In the more academic art evaluations, instead of personal opinions, one single aspect of an artwork would be analyzed and interpreted. It must be mentioned that many essential issues that were covered in the US and in Europe uh, were not covered due to censorship and lack of analytical background on the part of writers. For example, during the 70s in Europe and in the US, we see a lot of feminist art practices and the women's art movement had become one of the leading trends of the 20th century, basically intertwined with politics. However, in Iran, there was no similar trend. The lack of critical writing further demonstrates that the judgment for the public was often one-sided and elitist. Experts focused on themes, highlighting the necessity of single common characteristic and the local visual narrative and the prevailing discourse of the time suggests that the viewers may not have appreciated contradiction, experimentation, <coughs> or vagueness, indicating an anxious, anxious environment persistent about stability, homogeneity, and national identity. The various texts and publications of the time indicate that judgment for the public was conducted through the dominant government rhetoric of nationalism and integration, which was transferred <laughs> into a taste for Persian motifs and incorporation of traditional visual forms in many modern productions. This is this at times also determined the direction, style, and choice of criticism and exhibitions. Consequently, a constant topic of debate was universality versus a local narrative. Should be noted that although many works had transcended beyond the duality of universal versus traditional from a visual point of view, most writings did not reflect such perspective. For many artists, defining and depicting an authentic Iranian identity and incorporating quote-unquote real traditional motifs seemed an unrealistic task. They had sort of gone beyond that. While many others followed the marketability standards and offered works fit for an interna international market and audience. So my conclusion, um, the modern, um, I see the first group of writings, the modern texts of the late 50s and 60s, um, s sort of like a stream of consciousness reviews, uh, failing to show an overriding me methodic thesis about the works, and instead giving one-sided direction, mostly very personal and attacking. Uh, the text produced later became more coherent less personal, well-crafted, with a central evaluating core, even though more complicated and in-depth issues were still missing in the process of judgment for the public. On the whole, the impossibility of such a notion, that of an artist's psyche completely uniting with an imagined other, whether modern or traditional, was missing from the discourse. And uh, so th these two major trends I al already said, and uh, to end it, I'd just like to add, Missing was an exploring role that delved into the conflicting issue of an artwork in order to create a useful forum for the process of public uh, deliberation. Missing was a circular, communicative, and multifaceted analytical approach which came later 
in which changing each other's gaze, the writer critic would be responsive, constantly affecting the reader's outlook and being affected on different levels by artists and according to different cultural contexts. Thank you so much.